In this video, we'll give you several tips on how to successfully sell online. These are general tips useful for any marketplace like Etsy, Amazon Handmade, Bonanza, your own website, etc. And hopefully they'll be helpful enough to get you started. I'm Tanner and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about metal, leather, paper, and other types of arts and crafts, how to grow your arts and crafts business, or what it's like to live as full-time artists, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Let's get started with our first tip. Now this is assuming that you already have your business name and you've already made some products that are ready to sell. Number one, writing descriptions. Keep your target market in mind while writing the description of your item. Include the story behind it or who it's for. Why did you make it or what inspired you to create your art or handmade items? Does it have any benefits? If it's a knitted scarf, does it keep the wearer warm in sub-zero weather or is it a light scarf made for fall temperatures? List your features such as size, color, availability, or materials. Do you need to include any other important information that the buyer might need to know, such as care instructions? Number two, product photos. Product photos are what will sell your item even if the why behind the product isn't clearly stated. Your product photos need to be clear, uncluttered, and evenly lit. When you look at your photos, can you tell what is for sale? Here's a photo of one of our items taken with a DSLR and studio lighting. And here is one shot with a cell phone and natural lighting. It's possible to do great photos with whatever you have on hand. Number three, lifestyle photos. These are not 100% necessary when you're starting out, but when you identify your target market, you will want to either take lifestyle photos yourself or have someone take photos that tell the story of your item. Amy did these lay flat lifestyle photos of our nature inspired books. Amy spent much of her childhood in wooded areas and mountains and was inspired to create a line of nature themed books. She took elements of what inspired the design and included them in the lay flat photos to tell the story of why she might have created the item to the potential buyer. You can do lay flats or if what you make is wearable, you can use models as well, such as in this photo that Amy took with some of our handmade items. Number four, write a return policy. This is extremely important. You need to write out word for word exactly what you will accept back if the customer is unhappy with the order. One word of caution is accepting returns on custom orders. Because you spent your time designing the pattern, drawing the images, and using your materials or supplies creating the piece, if you accept a return now, it's most likely unsellable. To avoid custom returns or unhappy customers, send a proof before using any supplies and after the customer has paid. Number five, FAQ. This allows your customer to have all their questions answered in one spot. It also saves the customer and you time because you're not emailing back and forth and waiting for responses. It can include answers to questions such as turnaround time, sizing, fit, how to clean the item, etc. Number six, shipping materials and a small kitchen scale. Find a small kitchen scale that can weigh up to 11 pounds or more. And this is usually all you need to get started packaging for your small handmade items. We use these two scales to get fairly accurate results for our packages. This one's for smaller packages and this one's for larger packages. If you or your friends and family order from Amazon Prime, keep some of the packaging materials in boxes. This is a great way to recycle boxes and packaging that are usually in perfect condition. Your local thrift store and dollar stores often have packaging of some sort as well as a variety of sizes of boxes if you're not ready to invest in a wholesale bundle of boxes and bubble wrap. Number seven, banking. This includes a bank account that you can get direct payments to or a PayPal account. For this, you will most likely need a credit card. There are some sites that allow you to use a debit card, but you will need to carefully look into the requirements for each site. Number eight, a product disclaimer. Why do I need this, you might ask? It's because you are making each item one at a time with your hands and you aren't a machine. So there will be variations and differentiation between the pieces you make to those ones that are pictured on the listing. There will be some differences, whether the paint turns out slightly different, the dye doesn't go as dark the next time around, or you're using a natural material and it's just slightly different the next time. While these features are often considered a bonus of handmade items, since the item becomes truly one of a kind, 
They need to be noted so your customer knows exactly what to expect. Also, there is no universal setting on each phone, TV, computer monitor, etc. And people don't see color exactly the same. So what appears to be candy apple red to you on your monitor might appear kind of more of a brownish tone on someone else's monitor to them. Number nine, shipping policy. This is an absolute essential for every item that you list. You need to try to answer some of these questions in your policy. Who pays for the returns? What happens if the item is damaged on the way there? How long does a customer have to cancel their order after they've already paid? Do you plan on offering shipping upgrades? If you're looking for an online marketplace to sell on, check out our video on where to sell online here. Want us to go into any of the listing tips further? Please comment below. We'll see you next time.